Welcome to the Star Wars Canon Podcast, where we're keeping that galaxy far, far away in order. What a piece of junk! There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. Now, here's your host, Brian Miller. Hello everybody, welcome to episode 7 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. As you just heard, I am your host, Brian Miller. And uh, you guys better be ready to hear some more of that sexy intro voice from that uh, that woman that you just heard from. Because she is joining me on this episode. Kirsty, say hello to everybody. Hi guys. Hey, uh, the reason Kirsty's joining me this week, Chris and I actually recorded the episode the other day. And then today, as I was editing, I realized the files were corrupted. We weren't going to be able to use them. So to make the deadline here, the the podcast has to be up within the next six hours. We decided we sit down and shotgun through this real quick. So we are going to re-record this episode and get through it. So Kirsty said she'd give me a hand, uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this finished up. Are you ready, babe? Yeah, it's just been a very long time since I joined you. It's so. it's been what like a year and a half, two years almost since I sat in through a full episode. Since, yeah, you betcha. Yeah, it's been a while because you used to help out on the YouTube channel a lot when we first started. When I had like six subscribers, that was <laughs> that was when when we first started. So, all right, well, let's get in. Before we get into the news, uh, we've got a couple of housekeeping things to to take care of real quick. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, Star Wars Canon Podcast is now on iTunes and Spotify. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, you already know, obviously. Uh, but for those of you listening on YouTube and on uh, StarWarsCanonPodcast.com, we are now on Spotify and iTunes. So make sure to head over there and give us a favorite, a follow, a thumbs up, something along those lines uh, to let us know that you're interested in, in following. And, you know, I told Kirsty I wasn't actually going to bring this up this episode, but I'm still going to anyway. We're... This was Kirsty's idea, so we're talking about uh, buying some dog tags and having the Star Wars Canon Library logo put on them. Uh, we're we're wanting to do that very soon. We're trying to get people interested in it, but we're uh, we're going to be selling those for five dollars a piece, and all the proceeds for those are going to be going to uh, Wounded Warriors. So uh, that that's Kirsty's brainchild. Um, yeah, guys, basically it's just, uh, we want to show support for our troops. Brian, you know, um, is a veteran, and my father was too, and got quite a few friends and family out there, and we just want to show some support for that, and want to show that here at the Star Wars Canon Podcast that we're a supporter of our veterans, and anybody who is still serving. So, uh, we just want to give that opportunity for you guys to show that support by, um, being able to do this so if anybody has any interest in that just give us an email shoot us a message any way that you want to reach out and let us know the more people that are interested the more likely that we are going to be able to do that for you guys so just just give us a shout out for that yeah just just shoot us an email or a facebook message or something along those lines we'll see it we we check all the avenues so um with all that out of the way uh what do you say babe we get into some news Yeah, we got a couple of things going on here this week. Um, It looks like we got some new comic series coming out that are releasing from Marvel, obviously. Um, It looks like we've got 24 to 30, possibly, one-shot issues, which are each going to be covering a different character in three different eras. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be covering the Age of Republic which is going to be, like, during the prequel era, and then the Age of Rebellion, which is going to be, like, during the classic trilogy, and then the Age of Resistance, which is going to be during this new trilogy that's been released since Disney took over Lucasfilm. Yeah. So, um, what? how do you feel about those? Well, they, they said it's going to be a 24-issue run. They originally said it was going to be 30, and then they backpedaled and said 24, so there's a six-issue discrepancy there that hasn't been... Uh, addressed yet, but uh, as of right now, it's going to be six different, uh, or I'm sorry, six, uh, 24 issues, 24 different issues, and it's going to be uh, bi-monthly, two issues a month, I believe is what it's going to be, uh, and uh, it's supposed to start in December of this year and run through November of next year, right in time for uh, episode nine, which which will be kind of a, a cool lead up for, it. especially since, you know, this is the first Christmas since Dis- you know since Force Awakens came out we haven't got a Star Wars movie at Christmas. Yeah, this is a great way to be able to cover that discrepancy in the time there without having a film release that is still going to be covering 
some information going on with some of our favorite characters that we have seen thus far. Well, I don't want to say some of our favorite characters because, you know, not all of them are the greatest. Like, hang on a second. Let me pull up. Let me uh, find the story and pull up the actual list of characters. Yeah, because I definitely did release a list of character names. Let me. I only said favorite characters because obviously it's it's new characters, but it's ones that we know because they've touched base with some of them and it's familiar faces. Let's rephrase that to familiar faces. That's that's better, yeah, because. Some of this Age of the Republic stuff, it, not a lot of people are fans of those characters. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, let me pull it up here. Okay, well, while here he's... It is. Okay, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right, so the list of characters that they're going to be covering are, for Age of Republic, we've got Qui-Gon Jinn, Darth Maul, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jango Fett, Anakin Skywalker, Count Dooku, Padme Amidala, and General Grievous. For Age of Rebellion, we're going to have Lando Calrissian... Jabba the Hutt, which will be a really, really cool one. Uh, Han Solo, Boba Fett, Luke Skywalker, Grand Moff Tarkin, Princess Leia Organa, and Darth Vader. And for the Age of Resistance, we're going to have Poe Dameron, Finn, Captain Phasma, Rose Tico, General Hux, Rey, Kylo Ren, and the Supreme Leader, Snoke himself. So, I know, man, man. I know. I know. You gotta let your claws in. There you go. Oh, poor baby. I know, poor baby. <laughs> so those are the, the, the those are the characters we're going to be having one-shot issues of. And we still don't know what those other six were that they were talking about. But uh, maybe time will tell. Maybe. I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, we've got that coming out. We're, uh, man, that's going to be a lot of comics to keep track of where they go, though. Yeah, but um, moving on to the next set in the news, uh, even with that being said, that's going to be a lot of comics to keep track of. It has been released that Bob Iger himself has come forward and said that they're going to be more careful about the volume and the timing of the Star Wars movies going forward in their production and things of that nature. So, I mean, do we think that that's a good thing? Moving forward, do we think that that's going to make a lull in content, especially for us here at the Canon Podcast? I I think it's a good thing. It's hang on, let me pull that article up too, and and we'll we'll because there's a lot to unpack with that with that article. Here it is. So yeah, what wh- what happened was uh, Bob Iger was talking to Hollywood Reporter and said that uh, he was taking the blame for what happened with Solo because okay. of its underperformance in box office, saying that he felt like it was too much Star Wars too fast. And maybe a Star Wars film a year is entirely too much Star Wars. Which, look, before I met you, when I was a Star Wars fan, I, when the prequels were coming out, we had to wait three years for each film. There were three years between each movie, and that was a right. gut-wrenching three-year wait. I think two years would be a good wait for each Star Wars movie. Two would be all right. You know, because we've got all this other stuff coming out, especially with the comics, you know. I mean, we've how many is- how many series do we have ongoing now? We've got oh, Star geez. Wars is an ongoing. The new Vader run is an ongoing. We're gonna have this new uh, series from Marvel that's gonna be ongoing. Poe is almost is they're one issue from being done. Don't have a whole lot of ongoing stuff right now. I mean, Afra's ongoing. I think I said that, didn't I? Did I no, say Afra? I don't think you said Afra. Afra yeah. is ongoing right now, but that's really all we got. And then we're gonna have the the, the TV shows. But uh, what what his actual quote was? Uh, here here's what he actually said. He said, "I made the timing decision." And as I look back, I think the mistake that I made, I take the blame, was a little too much too fast. You can expect some slowdown, but that doesn't mean we're not going to make films. J.J. is busy making nine, and we have creative entities, including Benioff and Weiss, who are developing sagas of their own. And yes, that does include Ryan Johnson, even though he didn't say that in this this. Uh, quote, but it goes on uh, to say, uh, who are developing sagas of their own, which we haven't been specific about, and we are just at this point, or we're just at the point, where we're going to start making decisions about what comes next after JJ's, but I think we're going to be a little bit more careful about volume and timing, and the buck stops here on that. So that means he gets the final say. He was the one, no, this is what we are doing. Well, I mean, I would hope so, yeah. seeing as how he's, like, the, the top dog at Disney, mm-hmm. seeing as how Disney owns Lucasfilm now, just because Lucasfilm is its own entity and is in control of Star Wars, Disney owns Star Wars right. and Lucasfilm as itself. So, yeah, I would say it definitely has to stop at Bob Iger. Yeah, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy is the president of Lucasfilm, but she can make all the calls she wants, but Bob Iger can veto oh, yeah. everything. So, um you know, and, and, and I know there's a lot of people that are really upset with Kathleen Kennedy right now with the way, the direction they think Star Wars is going in. 
and stuff like that. But I think this is actually a really good thing for Star Wars because uh, we've we're on our what third television show coming out, animated show now yeah, coming in. Yeah, Resistance. Second uh, since Disney took it over, we had Rebels. Now we're gonna have Resistance, and then we've got the live action coming from John Favreau uh-huh. with the uh, streaming service next year. So. The other stuff that to, to unpack with this concerning Solo, some of the, the background on it, uh, it says here, um, in light of the director change and having to nearly reshoot the entire movie, Lucasfilm wanted to move Solo, a Star Wars story, to December 2018, but Disney had enough of their previous film's delays and put their foot down. Our source tells us, this is coming from StarWarsNewsNet.com, our source tells us that Disney granted Lucasfilm the budget and time to make all the production changes they needed to fix anything broken with Solo, but that they had to make the May 25th release date. Uh, goes on, in addition to this, Disney told Lucasfilm that they would not let Solo interfere with their plans for Avengers Infinity War, meaning Solo would not get any preferential treatment in marketing to make up for the lost time due to its reshoots that lasted into the fall of 2017. Disney is a new territory having bought up so many different companies and franchises that they are now quite literally competing with themselves to an extent. So now Lucasfilm is returning to one project, or to returning focus to one project at a time per medium. So right now the only projects in development are Episode Nine, which is live action, uh, Star Wars Resistance, which is an animated series, and John Favreau's live action TV series. It sounds like they'll continue to develop a solid structuring among these three departments under the Lucasfilm banner, with Dave Filoni still heading the animation department. Disney is done experimenting with new or unusual filmmakers, and will go back to proven veteran talent who they know can handle a big-budget Star Wars production in an effort to prevent future production chaos, drama, and firings. So it wasn't just his quote that came out of that. It was his other stuff to unpack also. That's a lot to take in. But no, it kind of shows some of the uh, drama going on behind the scenes at Lucasfilm that I've kind of defended over the last several years, saying, no, 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 it's not there, but I guess in the long run it is. But that being said, I think it's the best move for Star Wars at this point to, to kind of back it off a little bit. And, and, and he's right. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. It doesn't all have to be films. Because they've already got seven, I mean, not counting Episode Nine. they've already got seven more films at the minimum announced. Oh, yeah, that's quite a bit of film, or yeah, films coming out on top of the canon and the comics coming out as well. Novels and, yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, because we whether you guys love it or hate it, it's still happening. Ryan Johnson's trilogy is still happening. That's. I mean, he already confirmed what yesterday that that is still in production. Yeah. Uh, that's happening. Benioff and Weiss, who are the showrunners for Game of Thrones, yep, they're doing their series. They didn't say trilogy, or duology, or film. They said series, which to me is four or more. Yeah. So that's four or more films at the minimum. And I think those are gonna. That's gonna be its own saga. I think we're gonna get like a new saga because we've got the Skywalker saga episodes one through nine. I think we're gonna get another new saga at starting at episode one, Star Wars episode one, blah blah blah, whatever. I think we're gonna get another one. That kind of blows my mind to think that Star Wars could ever stray away from anything other than the, than the Skywalker. Skywalker lineage. Because that that family really did a lot to screw the galaxy up. Yeah. That they're the <laughs> most drama filled family in the Star Wars galaxy, and it, it's. Really, I mean, think about it, though. They were at the forefront of everything. And Episode Nine, they've said, is going to be the end of the Skywalker saga. Kind of makes me sad. Because it does, that's kind of like it? what we grew up with. It's, like, that's what we've always known is this is Star Wars. The Skywalker family is Star Wars. Star Wars so is what? the Skywalkers. Yeah, like, it's... Where are we going to go from here, you know? Where do we go now? But anyway... Uh, but yeah, that's that pretty much does it for the, the the news stories. Guys, let us know what you think of uh, Bob Iger's comments. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, send us an email at StarWarsCanonLibrary at gmail.com. And uh, we might read some of those emails later on, uh, on on next week's episode. If you're listening on YouTube, comment below. Let us know what you thought. If you're listening on Facebook, again, comment below. Let us know. Uh, but yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's a lot to unpack. And, and But you know... I'm not really surprised, though, that they finally came out and said this. I knew something was going to happen after what happened with Solo. I knew I knew there was going to be some kind of change in in their in the way they were doing things. I mean, yeah, there was there was quite a bit of back backlash from Solo, but I mean, there's being a major production company like that, they're going to have to do something about it. But then you know, there's other people out there like me who, on the other hand. I did thoroughly enjoy Solo. I know you I did. don't care what you guys say. I really enjoyed that movie. I think they 
they kind of touched the Han Solo backstory pretty well. And, you know, the guy, he falls in love, he runs away, he tries to go back for the love, and then you find out at the end, you know, she's, like, corrupted, and she's, like, turned into this big evil thing, and, oh my god, now what's the big story? So, yeah, no, I loved that, okay? I know you did. I I'm know. a rebel at heart, so yes, I'm gonna love that story. Well, well I've, the more I watch Solo now, because we have it now, the more, yeah. the more we've watched solo the more i've watched it the more i'm like this isn't so bad because like once in a while you'll see old narren do something in the film and it's like oh that's totally harrison ford like there's just oh, there's, yeah. there's a couple times where it's like you know when he's standing in the cockpit of the falcon for the first time after l3 told him to get his presumptuous ass out of her seat yeah and he turns around and kira's kind of standing in the hallway and she walks away when you see him standing and he's kind of got his hands on his on the back of his belt and the way he kind of turns around was pure Han was pure harrison ford you know so when he walks up and he sees Chewie and Beckett playing on the hologram table, that look on his face when he's looking down was pure Harrison Ford from the seventies. Oh yeah. You know there were there were certain little, but not all of it was, which I liked. It was he he took Solo and made his own thing out of it, which it shouldn't have been dead on Harrison Ford. This is ten oh, no. years before. Oh yeah. You know, so. He needed to make his own spin on like being a younger version of him right. before he so I wouldn't necessarily say cultured or anything like that but figured out who he is yeah yeah you know but uh so. but you know and really the backlash what it wasn't even for solo it was for last jedi that's where it all stemmed from solo did so badly because people didn't want to see solo after last jedi because i because I, I even saw comments online of people saying i didn't see solo it was the sacrificial lamb that was the one we had to sacrifice because of last jedi well, I'm going to say right now, you people are wrong if that's the reason why you didn't see Solo, because seriously, it, you just can't not watch a film because of the you way didn't that, like the one that you came didn't, out yeah, it. because of the way a film did before. Okay, it's all subjective, like John Campia says, you know, you cannot right. just make an, a decision over one thing based off of something else before in the past. You, you know, you just got to keep... Giving it a chance, okay. Solo it's... was a much different film than Last Jedi, and we knew that even before we saw the film. You know, and and if you don't like the if you don't like the way the saga films go, don't the next film if it's not even connected to the other film has nothing to do with the other film. Give it a freaking shot. You know, like it just it. Now, had it been like, I'm curious to see how Episode Nine is going to do though. Yeah, I'm curious too. That I one's going to be the one that. I know. I do realize that episode eight was kind of darker. Like episode seven was kind of funny. It had more comedy in it than yeah. the than the prequel or even the classics had to them. Um, but episode eight did have that little bit more of a darker element to it. But I think episode nine is going to be an even darker element to it. Oh, because, it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah, they got if they're they're claiming that it's going to be the end to the Skywalker you story. You have a lot to wrap up. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit of stories to wrap up. So yeah, yeah it's going to be pretty damn dark. Well, you've got like I said on last week's episode, you've got several things to wrap up in and 9. You've got story arcs from 7 and 8. You have story arcs from 7 that were introduced that you have to wrap up. You have story arcs from 8 that were introduced that you have to wrap up. You're introducing new characters to us again at the very last, you know, at the, at the 11th hour. You're introducing new characters again, so they're going to have their stories. But then you've got two other trilogies before this one that you have to wrap up that they're tying everything together with. They've said Nine's going to tie everything together, so... I hope they can keep their word. And I do too. And they've got a, a master plan to this all. They, so, cause yeah, because it, it needs that's to be That's a big. lot. It needs, what episode nine should be going into it is the same thing what Infinity War was, if not bigger. Infinity War was the culmination of 10 years of films. Oh, yeah. Of like 19 different Marvel movies. This is the culmination of, you know, nine movies, the, but over the course of 40 years. Well, yeah, because the only difference is that, yeah, okay, they both, both of these entities do belong to Marvel, and mm -hmm. so, so, to, I, the, I to think, Disney. I, well, yeah. Okay, yeah, Disney. But I think that, with that being said, yes, they can do this, but at the same time, with the Marvel Avengers with, and Infinity War and stuff, they had complete control over the over entire story yeah. arc leading up to Infinity War. Mm. Now, with the Star Wars story arc, they were handed this. They were and handed said, this, and they had it. to yeah. figure out where. Okay, where do we begin to be able to wrap this up mm -hmm. and then start anew, leading off and branching out into this galaxy far, far away? So, what what do we do? Well, you've also got 
two completely different types of fan base too between Marvel and Star Wars. Star Wars fans are a very volatile bunch. They're this chemical mixture. If you mix them up the wrong way, it explodes. It's it's one of those things where I mean, no matter with Star Wars, no matter what you do, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Marvel, it's pretty much okay. Well, that one, you know, that Marvel movie sucked. Oh, well, let's just see what the next one is because it's different characters. Star Wars, you piss off the fan base once, you're screwed. The rest of the, I mean, so is there even a way to come back and to bring everybody back together? That's a very good question. There, I is. really don't even know how I to attack know. that question, honestly. Either. But uh. But anyway, that that pretty much does it for the news stories this week. Um, not a whole lot to talk about. Hopefully next week we have some more to talk about. But uh, this week, not a really not not a whole lot there. So uh, let's get through this next section pretty quick, and then we'll get to some mailbag questions, and then we're gonna call it a week. Upcoming canon this week uh, on I think it's Tuesday. Tuesday we've got the Blu-ray release of Solo: A Star Wars Story finally coming out for home video. On the 26th, which is Wednesday, comic book day, we've got two comics coming out. Poe Dameron 31, which is the final issue of Poe Dameron. It's kind of weird they stopped it on 31. Uh, I mean, you got to figure out when you're going to wrap up your right. story arc, whether that's 30 or 31 and 36. Yeah. And then uh, Dr. Aphra number 24 is coming out. But going back to Poe Dameron real quick, uh, it right now Poe Dameron is post-Last Jedi. It's happening after the Falcon takes off into hyperspace at the end of Last Jedi. We see what happened. We, we follow those events. You know, Rey and Finn and Poe are all there. BB-8's all there. But I'm wondering if they're not ending it because J.J. finally got the script done for 9 and was like, you guys really need to stop that series, like, right now because you're going to start getting into my territory. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering if he didn't write a script where they are like, oh, crap, that's coming up. We got to end the Poe Dameron comic before we get there. I mean, that's all very plausible at the same time, too, because honestly, with the way that they have their their uh, writing team and everything, mm -hmm. they all have to communicate with each other. So, I mean, regardless of what J.J. has done for his film and his script and everything, they still have to communicate, so, yeah. regardless. Yeah. No, I, I wish to God I was a member of the story group. That way I could see how all this inner workings go about. All right. Well, what do you say we get into these mailbag questions, and then uh, we're just going to go through a few of these. I don't know if we're going to do all of them that I had lined up, but we'll go through a few of them and uh, and uh, answer some of these. So how do you guys get your question on the Star Wars Canon Podcast? Just email it to us at Star Wars Canon li uh, Library at gmail.com, and uh, we'll go through and pick out a few of them. Uh, and like I said, this is going to be a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties and stuff uh, with the way we're recording. It's, it's almost like this episode's not meant to happen, but uh, we're we're going to make it happen. Oh yeah, we it's, want you guys to have this yeah, episode. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we're 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 doing this. So uh, let's get into the uh, mailbag questions. Kirsty, would you like to read the first one? All right, guys. So we have uh, Ryan Shepard wrote in, and he says. So since we are getting a spin-off films of major characters, do you think we will get novels about similar characters, or smaller characters, like Cad Bane, Jango Fett, Quinlan Voss, and maybe even one like Mother Talzin and other minor characters? Also, I'm a big fan of canon, and I love all that it's connected, including everything that's not a movie. I have a bookshelf, too, of all the books, TV shows, and comic volumes in chronological order. I don't include the young reader books or comics of Forces of Destiny to my canon bookshelf, so I was wondering if I should include Resistance and what you consider canon, and if excluded anything or like modify it in any way or take to heart that anything published after April 14 of 2014 is 100% canon. Thanks, Ryan. P.S. I love your podcast and I think it's one of the best. All right. Uh, well, there's a lot there. That's, that's a big question. Uh so let's let's start at the beginning. Uh, let's see here. Do you think we'll get novels about smaller characters like Cad Bane, Jango Fett, Quinlan Voss, maybe even one of Mother Talzin? Uh, man, I hope so. Uh, we've already kind of got one with Quinlan Voss. We got uh, Dark Disciple. It was yep. a Quinlan Voss and uh, Asajj Ventress novel. Really, really good one yep, too for yep. being prequel uh, era. Um, but for Cad Bane, Jesus, I'd kill to have a Cad Bane novel. Uh, Jango Fett would be an interesting one because you could tell the story of Dooku coming to him and recruiting him to be the clone template. Yep. You know, something like that. Uh, and Mother Talzin, that'd be cool because you just see more Dathomir witches. Yeah. That, that'd be insane to see. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to get some... Because we got the Padme novel coming out, too, next year. We've got uh, Queen Shadow coming out in March. And it's 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 going to follow Padme after she 
stepped down as queen and became senator. It's going to be the next queen asking her to stay on as senator like she was talking about in Attack of the Clones. So, uh, we, yeah, I, I hope to God they do more uh, minor character novels. Even if it's just one novel each, screw it. Just tell, tell these stories, you know? There's plenty of stories to tell. So, yeah, they, it, they've got plenty galaxy. of room to expand it. You know what? Since Disney owns it now, hell, we've got plenty of time. Oh yeah, we've got we've we've got decades. You can take your time and do it right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but let's see here. You also go on to say, uh, I don't include young reader books, uh, and comics uh, of Forces of Destiny uh, to my canon bookshelf. So I was wondering, should I include Resistance and in what you consider canon? Uh, I, Resistance is canon, technically. I guess it is going to be canon. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't think it's going to be. The same kind of storytelling we're used to with Clone Wars and Rebels. Yeah. But it's it's still going to be canon. I'm, I'm going to put it on my shelf. Uh, but uh, what I consider canon... Okay, so technically, everything that came out after... What, like what you said, April 14th, 2014, is canon. Everything. But that includes stuff like uh, the LEGO Freemaker Adventures. It includes that also, even though... That's not technically like Vader didn't, you know, take people out like he did in, you know, in the in the Lego series. It's the the story is canon, but the details are not. So like stuff like that, I consider what I would call canon adjacent. You know what I mean? So uh, like the Lego game that came out, the Lego Force Awakens, that's canon adjacent. It followed certain events, but the details were kind of fuzzy. You know, so stuff like that. Yeah, it's canon to a degree. Um Anything that I would take away, look, I have them on my shelf, but I don't actually consider them real canon. What I'm talking about is the novelizations for episodes one, two, and three. They came out long before, um, and they said that you know all the novels going forward were going to be canon. So anything in a novel that's not in the film is canon when it comes to seven, eight, Rogue One, and Solo. Anything in those novels that's not in the movie is still canon. Oh yeah, that, because that's considered a definitive edition, right. right? But but with the prequel novels, they came out beforehand, and there's stuff in the prequel novels, deleted scenes and stuff that are not canon. Yeah, they said those are canon where they match up with the film, and I tell people that, and they argue with me, and they argue the exact same thing I'm saying. They go, "Well, they're canon where they match up with the films." Yes, that makes the films canon. That doesn't make the book canon. So you have extra scenes like the, some of the best examples I can think of are in the Revenge of the Sith novel. There's a scene where... And they even had the deleted scene on the Blu-ray for Revenge of the Sith, but it's not canon. It was Bail Organa and Mon Mothma talking to Padme, and they were hinting at starting the Rebel Alliance. Uh Uh-huh. And that's not canon. That's no longer canon, because there's stuff in the Rogue One novel, and there's stuff in Catalyst that counteract that, that contradict it. Those particular scenes. So, stuff like that's not canon. I have them on my shelf just because... I want novelizations of one, two, and three, but the stuff that's not in the movie, I don't consider canon with those. And, and you know, deleted scenes. The only way I consider them a deleted scene, a deleted scene in the new films, canon, is if it's in the novel. That's the only way. Because there's deleted scenes I wish to God in the classic trilogy were canon, like three PO ripping the oh, yeah. sign off the door on Hoth. Yeah. That's my favorite deleted scene ever. That's my favorite three PO moment ever. When the Wampas reach out and grab the snowtrooper and it's pull like him in. It's like the only time that. Three PO is actually out. funny, yeah. Except for the time that he thought he was being funny when oh you didn't recognize me because I have a red arm, and now Brian thinks he's funny because every time we're in the store, he points to an action figure of three PO and says, "Who is that? I is d- he in Star I Wars? D- I don't recognize him." I did do that to Kirsty one time. We were um, not just one time. Where every were we? Time. Where were we? Big Lots. We were with Big Kyle lots, and Ashlyn. Toys R Us. No, well, <laughs> the time I'm talking about in, in particular, they had like an 18 inch, or was it a three foot tall? It might have been a three foot tall action figure of three PO, and he had the red arm. And I, I went and looked at the toy section. She was on the other side of the store, and I grabbed it and I walked all the way to her in the store, and I held oh. it up and I said, "Babe, I, I, who is this? I don't. It says Star Wars on it, but I don't know who this is." And she gave me this look, like worried that I was having a stroke. Oh yeah, I totally did. And I, and, and I was being dead serious. I was like, "I seriously, who is this? What is this person's name?" And she goes, "C three PO." And I finally looked at him and was like, oh, oh, I guess it is. I didn't recognize him because of the red arm. And the look she gave me, I thought she was going to leave me then and there. I thought I was going to be single walking out of big lots. I thought I was going to have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
but no, I like I like to joke around by that. But but yeah, that deleted scene with three PO on Hoth is my absolute favorite one ever. And remember, I had to find it. I had to really go online and find that scene to show it to you for the first yeah. time. And then I finally found it on the Blu-ray Saga collection of the first six films. I, they had it on there, so I was finally able to show it to you. But uh, I, if if it's not in one of the new novels, and it's not in the movie, it's not canon. The, the only full novelizations that are canon, balls to bone, are 7, 8, Solo, and Rogue One. Those are the only novelizations so far that are completely 100% canon. Of the films, yeah. Of the films, yeah. Everything uh, everything else, like the... Like, even the novelizations of 4, 5, and 6, which are crap at this point... Well, that's because they're young adult novels. Right, but and, they shouldn't have done them too, that in that they're format. They're too juvenile for you yeah, and your no, liking. They're, they're a little rough, but yeah, uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, if you have any questions about anything in particular... That's canon, because like we don't focus on everything canon here. We're the canon library, but we don't focus on everything canon, because there's some things that are canon that we don't keep track of, like the short stories in Star Wars Insider magazines. They came out a year after they started making those canon and said, "Oh yeah, all those are canon," and I was there was no way I was able to go back and get the rest of them. You know, so th- those are canon, but I don't keep track of them. It'd be impossible for me to go back and find all of them uh, and stuff like that. But I, the only thing we really focus on here is. Well, what are the main mediums we follow? It's films, novels, comics, TV shows, games, and short stories. Is that it? I think that's it. That's everything. Okay. Yeah, that's everything. So uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, what do you say we go on to question number two? We're, we're just going to answer a couple more of these, and then we're going to uh, call it a week. Okay, we got uh, Benjamin Balliot, I think is how you say his last name, wrote in, and he says... With Disney and Lucasfilm kind of pumping the brakes on film production volume, do you think we'll ever see two films a year now? And I know Brian mentioned last week that there should be a break between 9 and 10. Do you think that that will now happen as well? Do you think that will happen now as well? I don't know. Because me and Chris were talking about this the other day. Um, there's no way in hell we're going to two films a year now. There's 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 absolutely no way in hell we're going to two films a year. Um Especially with, with, like what you said, with him pumping the brakes, focusing on one at a time. I No, we're, we're never going to go to two films a year now. With As far as the gap between 9 and 10, I'm not even entirely sure we're going to get an episode 10 now. Because if 9 is the end of the Skywalker saga, there might not be an episode 10, 11 and 12, like what we've always thought there would be. I, I kind of think that, traditionally speaking now, from Lucasfilm and what they've set as the precedent is that everything's going to work as a trilogy. Mm-hmm. Every story that they're going to tell is going to come in threes. Well, so, the yeah. Benioff and Weiss stuff, though, isn't a trilogy. Well, no. But, but, but as far as the, speaking, the yeah, Especially films. with the Skywalker lineage and story yeah. arc. Yeah, I think it's going to come out in three. So, yeah, nine is going to be the end You think we'll get a 10, 11, so, and 12? We'll probably get a 10, 11, and 12, but I think that's going to be, like, later down the road. Much later down the road. Oh, yeah, much oh, later down the road with the way that they're pumping the brakes. They brains. don't even need to focus on episode 10 at this point. No. They just need to, once they get 9 out, then go and turn towards Ryan Johnson's trilogy and the Benioff and Weiss stuff. Focus on those and get them right. Don't have three different trilogies and sagas going at once, you know what I mean? All right, guys. Well, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode due to some technical difficulties. But next week, we will be back with a full episode for you guys. Uh, and, and just so you know, Kirstie and I have been talking a little bit. Uh, we're talking about switching the format of the show up just a hair. Uh, still going to be audio for you guys here on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, stuff like that. But uh, I think we're we're talking about doing... Uh, I think we're going to set the, the studio up a little bit differently. And, and actually, I, I just ordered a bunch of equipment yesterday to to uh, kind of up the production value a bit. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Uh, here in the next few weeks, we're, we're going to be switching things up a little bit. Might sound a little bit better, too. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But thank you guys so much for tuning in on this episode of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Without you guys, we would be nothing, and uh, we'll, we'll never lose sight of that here. If you guys are interested in checking out the other episodes we've got, they're available on podbean.com. Just search for Star Wars Canon podcast you can also go to star wars canon podcast.com you can check spotify itunes they're all there as well as youtube uh make sure to visit us on facebook and give us a follow so you'll know when the next live q a is going to be uh we're going to be giving away a couple things i think on the next episode as well so keep an eye out for that and guys as always 
like I said, thank you so much for being followers. Until next time, this is Brian and Kirsty signing off, and may the force be with you.